Hello, let us learn today about near infrared spectroscopy. In short term, it is called as NIRS. NIRS. So, we all know that uh, neonatology has grown up so sky high and a lot of equipments, invasive, non invasive, a lot of things in the care of newborns. That is the reason the survival also has gone up. Um, and also the mor morbidity, De definitely mortality has come down, a bit more of morbidity still have. A lot of gadgets are used in newborn intensive care unit. This is one of the important gadgets we use. It is a non-invasive technique, very important. Second thing is a real time. And third important thing is you can continuously monitor this. So, th this can be used in any regions, especially the brain, the liver, and splanchnic circulation. So, three important circulation we look at liver circulation, splanchnic circulation, and the brain circulation. What basically here we look at is we look at two important things. One is the, the cerebral regional uh, oxygen saturation, one. Second thing is how much the oxygen gets extracted from that tissue, whichever area you are using. Suppose you are using the brain, how much oxygen is extracted in that. That is one part we look at. Now, coming back to indications, when you should use this near infrared spectroscopy. One important continuous monitoring of any neonate, especially or uh, babies who are in the NICU one, sick neonates, babies with cardiac conditions like hemodynamically significant ductus arteriosus, persistent pulmonary hypertension and any congenital heart diseases. You can do that pre and post during the surgery, you can look into that. When I come ANS causes, yes, yes, like hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy in term neonates, in preterm neonates, intraventricular hemorrhage and periventricular leukomalacia, hydrocephalus, those are the conditions. Also important to know some of the gas variations, for example, hyperoxygenation, hypercarbia, hypocarbia, hypooxygenation, hypotension, inotropic supports, in all those conditions. You name any sickness in the neonate, you can monitor the uh, fractional extraction of oxygen, oxygenation in neonates. These are the indications actually to do that. And most of the units, they compare this with MRI, with ultrasound, and also with what is called as the CFM monitor. So, knowing some of the indications like this, the technique is very important. So, make sure that, suppose if uh, now let us do the brain NIRS. So, what is that NIRS, brain in NIRS? So, what are the things required? So, one important area chosen here is the forehead. And make sure that forehead is dry. And so, you need to keep the sensor. These are the sensors. These are the probes actually. The probe, if you see, one part of the probe is covered by thin paper like this. And this is an indicator that do not touch it. So, even after removal, you are not supposed to touch because that is the thing which is going actually getting attached to the forehead. And make sure that it is not sitting over the hair, no water content because a lot of artifacts will happen. So, when you take out like this, you are seeing the sensor here. There are two important things. One is called as, this is a source of the light. You can see the source of light. This is a source and it has got two things. One is, there are two detectors. One is the superficial and the other one is the deep. Okay. So, here, if you when you use the NIRS, it actually picks up the um, the the what is called the uh, whatever we want the extraction, whatever we want the saturation on this, all will be picked up by what is called as within the three centimeters depth. That's very important. How to place the probe? I told as I told you that there are two important because Brian has got right side and left side. So this is the left side. I'll start with this. So, this is the source, see, source should come away. So, I will keep one probe here, make sure that this is dry area, I am keeping the probe, see, okay. 
is attached. Another probe similarly again to take it out. Again, you got a source and a detector. Okay. See how it is connected, and then you have got actually a connector here, and there is one common connector I will show here. This is the common connector you can show. We both are connected to this, and this cable is connected to this, this monitor. Okay, and then you are seeing two values here. The one value for the first one, what you are seeing is for the left cerebral hemisphere and the down one what you are seeing is for the right cerebral hemisphere. This is called as RSO2 percentage. So again like our pulse oximetry the principle is the same. The principle is by Beer Lambert. So the same principle we hold here. What is the difference between pulse oximetry and this saturation what you are seeing? The pulse oximetry is actually the reading picked up by the artery, pulsatile artery. But here what we are looking at the tissue level. So when you are looking at the tissue level, tissue has got both venous and arterials. So it picks up both, then gives as a percentage. So if you see this 86% and 72%. Normally the range is between 60 and 90 in term babies. And that is normal. Anything less than 45 with respect to the preterm and term, actually it is called low. Anything more than 90, it is called high. Now, when I say high or low, you should know what are the conditions which cause high, which are the conditions which cause high values here. So, anything which can cause what is called as low carbon dioxide, anemia, low oxygenation, intraventricular hemorrhage, periventricular leukomalacia, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, hydrocephalus, all will cause low. When I say low, I told you it is less than 45. Now, anything which goes beyond 90 or in preterm is beyond 85, it will cause high also. What are the conditions? Suppose carbon dioxide is very high, hypercardia. Second thing is you have got hyperoxygenation. And third thing, you get in hypoglycemia and see a brain injuries. In those conditions, will happen. Suppose if you see the same baby when we did, some of the one of the parameters was on the higher side. So that means it was sometimes it was 90 when we did carbon dioxide level. It was high. It was around 50, 55. So this is very important. Now, by knowing these values, you should also by by having this saturation or oximeter saturation. You can also find out what is the fractional extraction of oxygen. What is the fractional extraction of oxygen? This is a saturation, for example, 97 you are seeing here. What you are seeing on the left hemisphere, it is 87. Now, you deduct this value, 87, from 97 and divide by again with a pulse oximetry saturation. So, that means SAO2 minus the what is called as RSO2 divided by the same SAO2 will give how much? So, 0 0.1 that is a fractional extraction of oxygen. Similarly, for the right brain also you can do 92 or 94 whatever you get minus 75 divided by the pulse oximetry 97 will give what is called fractional extraction of oxygen. So, in a nutshell, any baby which is admitted to newborn intensive care unit with sickness, always you should check with the NIRs. But limitations are there. If you have this machine, at least you can use it. If you have opportunity to compare NIRS with ultrasound, you can do that. And then ultimately, you just monitor the baby until the baby gets better and then goes home. So definitely, we should thank all the gadgets, whatever we have here. And uh, most of these things are useful, provided you have the operator.